a little bit continuing of last last time we had share a few weeks ago we talked about standing we didn't even talk about standing and leaning for general we talked about standing for the Aseret Hadib brought and maybe some issues that arose with that so following along the same lines to talk about and I mentioned uh, Mark hopefully will come this is topic is for him uh, the idea of standing during davening I wrote when and why there's not as much why as more when but just to I mean, we're probably mostly familiar with the customs that we have, but hopefully I was able to pick out at least some sources that would be uh, of interest and to see a little bit of how these customs developed. What I noticed, and from what I remember, I don't daven in Sparty feel so often, but Sparty tend to sit a lot more for davening than Ashkenazim. Including Kaddish. Right, correct. And when you look at the sources, uh, most of the sources that we'll see for leaning, you know, that talk about the the the, the churm is almost the standard in the Ramah, or all is in the Ashkenazim. The Shulchan Aruch does not have uh, nearly as much, so probably based on that, we'll see that we end up standing a lot more than they do. So I just split this up into really going through the different sections of Davenim, Sukkot Zimra, and then Shema, and the brachos related to Shema. I did a little bit out of order just because. Um, then I did Chazar Sashat, and then I went to, you said you'd be early, mm-hmm. and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> At least you admit them and said this is dedicated to me? Yeah, I did. Yeah, more than, I know, more I missed than that. Once. More than once. <laughs> you can watch it for the dedication. I watched what you said. Okay. <laughs> then Kaddish and then Shemona Eshe. So we'll start from the beginning. Let's just start, the truth is, a little bit before the beginning, something I wanted to put on here, I didn't find so much into it, uh, more dealing for men than the women, but in terms of talus, so we stand when we put on talus, why do we do that? So the truth is, we generally, there's an idea to stand whenever you make a, uh, what we call birchos a mitzvah, whenever you make a bracha on a mitzvah, there's an idea to stand, so that's one reason, but also they actually make a connection between tzitzis and the omer, when it comes to the omer, in, with respect to both of them, it uses the word lachem, and then therefore they make gzera shavav lachem. That one of the one of the phrases it uses with respect to the omer is hachel chermesh bakama. So that's really referring to the idea of the first produce. But they make a drasha that bakama is really koma in terms of standing up, and say, therefore we have to stand for the omer. So we stand when we say, I think, Sversa Omer, and we stand when we put on Talis. How about those people that sit halfway through Kiddush? Kiddush is a bit of a different uh, idea. When it comes to standing and sitting for Kiddush, I think part of the reason to sit for Kiddush is because you're having a Suda and almost you want to, it's uh, sometimes better to sit. And the reason why people stand for the beginning is yeah. because the beginning of Kiddush is... Vayichulu. So Vayichulu we see as we talk about that as being a testimony as a form. So whenever you give testimony, you have to give testimony while you're standing. So that's why some people will stand and then sit uh, for the middle. Probably once people start standing for the first part, they just sit for the whole thing. Um, but Havdalah also you see different costumes and some people will sit really? through. Yeah, some people in Yeshiva and in Gush, I know certainly one of the Rosh Yeshiva used to always sit for uh, for Abdallah, I, the, we're not going to talk about did that. Did he do the today. long one, or did he just do the, the, the regular Abdallah? No, but I mean, it doesn't matter. matter. He I would. Well, no, so the question is do some people don't say Hine, like in Shul, we don't say Hine, the Tsukim before. I think that's yeah. what. Yeah. That's no, no, what I mean, mean. There's, there's also a little, like Benny will say, a, a very long Abdallah <laughs> after. Oh, after. after. But yeah. those, those are just, yeah. I think, songs, yeah. I think, is more than anything else. Okay, so just to start with, so that's. Talis. Tfilin, I actually had on the source sheet, but I want to keep the two pages, so I cut it off. Tfilin um, is actually, you'll see there's a difference in custom between the Ashkenazim and the Sfardim. Ashkenazim will stand when they put on Tfilin Shalyad and Tfilin Shorosh. Probably, again, based on the idea that it's a mitzvah, but the mitzvah should stand. Sfardim actually sit for the Shalyad and stand for the Shorosh. I think it's based. It seemed to be, it's fine, I didn't see it based in the Sephardim, like Shulchan Aruch doesn't talk about it, but some of the Achronim who do mention it seem to base it on the uh, Zohar, I think, or Kabbalah, so Sephardim are often also more inclined to follow that, so they sit for the first putting on Shulchan Shalyad and stand for Shalrosh. Okay, okay, so let's just go to the source sheet here, Psukit Zimra, standing during Psukit Zimra. So when do we stand during Psukit Zimra? Most people, I guess, we stand for Baruch Sheamar. We stand for Yishtabach, beginning and end, 
And then Mizmar we stand Mishmar the Toda. So the truth is, Mishmar the Toda, if I'm not, and also, um, sorry, from Vayibarak David on as well. Mishmar Toda, I found nothing. I didn't find anybody who says why we stand. If you look in the sitter, it says you should stand, and everyone does. Yeah. I don't know where that comes from. Probably comes from the idea of Mishmar the Toda being in uh, commemoration of giving the Korban Toda. And when you give a Korban, you would stand. So I'm assuming it comes from there. So when you look in. And on Shabbat, you have. People stand for Hodu. And you have the. So let's just start what I what I found here in some of the sources. The Rama, <coughs> again, and I noted before that many of these will be found in the Rama. The Rama source number one writes, "V'nahagula amor kishomrim baruch sheamar vayivarech David v'yishtabach." So the minute I get to stand, "Baruch sheamar vayivarech David yishtabach." And the truth is that the Mishnah talks about this. "Vayivarech David," he doesn't even include Shirat Hayam. But well, we'll see in source number three. Uh, we'll see how that's included. So that's the Ramah. He says time for those three. The Shulchan Aruch in source number two, what does he write? And we're going to get back to this in source number four. But the Shulchan Aruch writes, Omer Shliach Tzibur Yishtabach Me'udmav. When it comes to standing for Pesuk de Zimra, the only thing that Shulchan Aruch mentions is Omer Shliach Tzibur Yishtabach Me'udmav. That the Chazin, when he recites Yishtabach, should stand up. Makes no other mention of standing. Again, the Ramah said, Baruch Shemar, Baruch David. The Shulchan Aruch makes no mention whatsoever of standing. Again, I haven't been to the Sephardi Shul in a while, but I, I, would, I would imagine that they don't, considering that we mentioned that they don't really even stand for Kaddish all the time, I would assume that they also don't stand for uh, Psuki de Zimra as well. And here in source number three, this will really, you know, almost answer the question when you actually have to stand in the Aruch HaShulchan. Aruch HaShulchan writes, V'yesh no'agim la'amor b'vayivarech David u'v'shirat hayam So here he adds on shirat hayam as well, u'v'yishtabach. V'yesh mishe kasab davka b'yeshiva al-pi ha'kabal And there's some people right there, you should actually recite all of these sitting, or maybe specifically yishtabach, based on some sort of Kabbalistic source. U'mitzad adi, and this is maybe the most important part, e'en shum k'peida levad. We really don't care all that much about standing except for Shmona Esrei, Michuyabim Lamod, Ukdusha, the Kadishu Barchu. So Shmona Esrei, you have to stand, as well as Kedusha, Kadish, and Barchu. Those three we de- generally ca- classify as. Kadish being the. Any Chatsi Kadish? We're going to get to Kadish. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get to all these really yeah. at length. Okay. But Kedusha, Kadish, and Barchu is what we generally call Davar Shebik Dusha. So for all those things, you, that, that, there's really a created then, you really have to stand, and there's an idea to stand. For everything else, it's really just to some sort of minhag, and it wouldn't really be a big deal one way or another. Again, I'm not saying that you should start <laughs> changing the practice, and you know, if everybody in the shul is doing one thing, you're not necessarily saying you should change that, but really when it comes to the kapeda, it's really how much we care it's for those issues. So in source number four, I wanted to read through this. I just found it very, he just explains a little bit of what we read. This is the Bach. The Bach uh, stands for the Bayit uh, Chadash. Rav Yoel Shirkis, who lived, I think, in the 17th century. So he wrote, I wouldn't even call it a commentary, the same way the Beit Yosef is in the commentary. On the tour, he, he wrote um, a work which is, you could say it's a commentary on the tour, but it's really just his own perush, really, that he attached to the tour. From what I remember hearing, I don't remember from who, he almost just hedged his bets incorrectly, right? Uh, you had, I think at the time you had the tour and you had the Shulchan Aruch. And he thought that the tour, I think, would be more popular, so he decided to put his commentary to the tour. Uh, history showed us otherwise, and that the Shulchan Aruch is studied much more widely than the tour, so I think the Bach often falls a little bit out of uh, into oblivion just because people, unless you're really studying well, halakha at depth, you're not going to. It's cracks, so to A little bit. Yeah. So here he just, so here he's referring to the tour. The tour. Pretty much what the Shulchan Aruch on source number two, that the Shliach Tzibor stands for Yishta Bach. So the tour writes the same thing as well. So the Bach is just speaking a little bit about that, and he's going to mention some other issues. So I really wanted to read through, I cut out a little bit, but just to read through everything he writes here. So does the Shulchan Aruch say the Shliach Tzibor sits otherwise? No. So correct. I didn't bring that in here. So 
the shliach tzibur in general, no, there's, there's a special idea of the shliach tzibur having to stand all the time because he's representing the community in terms of standing before God. He always has to stand. So why would he only write this here? So the Aruch HaShulchan actually explains, when you look through the, the order of the Shulchan Aruch, so in Orach Chaim, they often follow the order of, you know, the morning. So it starts off with the, you know, the first simon deals with, you know, waking up in the morning, and then it deals with the halachos of tzitzis and tefillin, and then it gets into davening, birch of shachar, psukit zimra, and then after that, it, st- it starts mentioning yishtabach there, and then it, start- then it gets into the laws of the shliach tzibur. So you mentioned what was the custom. The custom used to be, and still is in some shuls, more so in Israel than anywhere else, that the chazin really used to only get up at Yishtabach. There would not be a chazin for Psuke de, Psuke de Zimra. Years, still do that. Okay, so, lots of places. Well, so I've been to Ashkenazi places in Israel where also they would only only comes once Yishtabach start, they'd have a chazin. There wouldn't be a chazin, they would, they would really start davening at that point. So that's why when you look at the order in the Shulchan Aruch, he talks about Yishtabach and then he gets into the laws of Shlech Tibur, Aruch Shulchan mentions that's because that, that was just the custom at the time, that they really didn't have a chazin until Yishtabach. So why would he mention, you're right, it's not that the Shlech Tibur would be sitting earlier, is that there was no Shlech Tibur really earlier, the Shlech Tibur is starting now, and he's saying when he starts, he should start uh, standing. So the Bach writes as follows: the Kachi Hatsa. Here's the the suggestion: the Lachar Shesiem Psuke de Zimra. So after you finish Psuke de Zimra, Upsuke by Varech David. So he almost doesn't include that Psuke de Zimra. Meshirat Hayam. So Omeid Shliach Tzibur Matchil Yishtabach. So he's going to the Shliach Tzibur going to say Yishtabach. Veomer Kaddish. Okay. So what is the tour, or really, and the Shulchan Aruch saying the same thing? The Ratzono Lomar, the Chevan de Tzarich Lomar Kaddish Meumar Achar Yishtaba. Since there's an obligation to stand while reciting Kaddish, Im Yomar Yishtabach Meyushav, if you're going to sit for Yishtabach, Im Kain Mafsik Ben Yishtabach Le Kaddish, then there's going to be a break, an interruption, a hefsek between Yishtabach and Kaddish. Kol Osa Shah She Omed Mim Komo She Yashav Sham Biyore Difne Hateva. So, meaning, let's say you're sitting, the Shliach Tibor is singing the seat for Yishtabach, and then he's going to get up and say Kaddish, Kaddish you have to stand. So it's going to be half sec, he has to get up, he has to go from his seat, walk from his seat over to the, to the bima and get up. Oh, and, and he's going to have to prepare himself to recite Kaddish. And it's not really appropriate to take a break between Yishtabach and Kaddish. When do we take a break here? So putting on Talas and Tefillin. So that's a whole separate issue in terms of uh, when the when the it gets really early, so you can't put on talis and tefillin in the morning. So what they do with the early minyan and sometimes the earliest two minyanim or three even is that you really either you don't put on talis and tefillin at all, you put it on when davening starts and you don't say a bracha, and then they don't they sometimes they'll push out davening and then you will only really make the bracha on talis and tefillin after yishtabach. So what happens is actually. So when it comes to everybody in the, in the tzibur, so after Ishtabach, they pause and they put on talis and tefillin then, and then the chazan continues. When it comes to the chazan, actually, he doesn't do it then. The chazan does it before Ishtabach. I think it's for the same reason that we're talking about now, because we don't like to have a break. So even though there is a break, because we're waiting for everybody else, but I guess for the chazan himself, we don't really want to have a hefsik between Ishtabach and Kaddish. So for the Chazin, he actually makes the bracha before Yishtabach. Why don't they just put, do it before Yishtabach then? For everybody else? Yeah. Well, I think it's better to do it afterwards because during Sukkot Zimra, we try not to, we, we, from Baruch Shemar to Yishtabach is really one unit. We try not to talk in between or have any half sick. So I think it's better to do it but after. But up to what? And, no, so and, after, and after Yishtabach. Because okay. Baruch Shemar is the bracha beginning Sukkot Zimra, and Yishtabach is the bracha yeah. ending it. Okay. So I think in some ways it's better, I guess here you have conflicting, you know, competing values a little bit. So for the Tzibor, it would be better to do it after Yishtabach. For the Shtel Tzibor, we don't want him to have a half sick, so he does it before. I've been to, I think at Associated, they actually, when they do it, they do it differently. They say Kaddish and then they break, which is interesting, but I think they might do that um, because they want to connect Kaddish, because Kaddish is really coming as the ending of 
Suge Zimra, so they want to put that together, so you'll have a whole um, range of customs when it comes to that. But here, so he says, therefore, stand for Yishtabach, not, why? Not because you have to stand for Yishtabach, but because we want to make sure that he's ready to stand for Kaddish. So why? So why? So why? So why? So why? So why? ready to recite um, Kaddish standing. And they explain the reason why they have to, the Chazan has to say Yishtabach and he has to be standing. Eino Ela Kedei Lomar Lav Kaddish. Eino Ela, sorry, Kedei Lomar Lav Kaddish. It's not because you have to stand for Yishtabach, it's because you really have to stand for Kaddish. So what that means is that even though the Ramah noted all these customs to stand, Baruch Shemar by Baruch Tavid Yishtabach, the, sh- the Shulchan Aruch thinks there's really no idea of standing for Pesuk and Zimra at all. And he only mentions Ishtabach. <coughs> just first of all, and the Bach is going to point this out. Who he he only mentions the Shliach Tzibur. He doesn't say everybody else has to stand. And the only reason to do that is because you're really preparing for you're preparing for for Kaddish. But when it comes Ishtabach itself, Lo Hayatzarich Lo Omra Meumad. There's no idea to stand. Ki lefia din ein sarich amida. Again, he's going to mention the same idea because lefia din, you only need to stand ella bedavar shabikdusha ki gon kadish ukdusha ubarchu. That's it. Why? So why those three? The kevan de tsarich asar asara. Since you need ten people for davar shabikdusha, tsarich nami she nekadish meumad. So there's an idea of being mekadish God, um, glorifying God, really. Um, standing, kishem shahamalachim mekachin also beamida. The same way that when the when it talks about the malachim uh, praising God, that's also standing. What, what pasuk is it used there? He's going to use a pasuk here. He's going to use a pasuk later. But is there not? Or how about the pasuk we're saying kedusha? Do any of those refer to them standing? The uh, um, no, it doesn't use it there. And how about the other places? I think in Kedusha and Shabbos, did I mention it? I don't think so. Can I ask just sort of Yeah. Has, when, when these, when these no. were written, yeah. the, 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 the Dabi the Tzvila was is it almost exactly like it is now? Yeah. It is. There's no yeah. minimal major change or No, just minor. Mind. I don't think anything major. Okay. When the Ramah writes, he doesn't mention Shirat Hayam, he only mentions the Barak David. So I don't know if they didn't have Shirat Hayam then or if they would sit. But, okay. so now the Bach continues. So he, he answers my problem. This answers my problem. What is his problem? Tuva. Because if the Shulchan Aruch actually thought you had to stand up for Yishtabach, why is he single out the Shlech Tzibur for standing? He should have said, Everybody says it standing. To have a mashma af kol akahal. Ve'od, furthermore, lama lo kasav rabbeinu t'tarich sheyomar baruch she'amar me'uman. Why doesn't the Shulchan Aruch mention anything about standing for baruch she'amar? Why? Shehare b'sefer tolas Yaakov. I have no idea what that sefer that is. Kasav. It mentioned that sefer. V'zeh l'shono. So the tolas Yaakov writes as follows. V'ra isi be'or zarua ki shevach zeh, the shevach with a baruch she'amar, why did they institute um, Baruch Shemar? There was a note that fell, right? Petek. There was a note that fell from Shamaim. Umatsuhu Kasuba. And they saw what was written on it. Viejbo Pe Zain Tebos. And there were 87 letters on this, um, on this note. And of course, right, that Baruch Shemar is 87. Sorry, Tevos is 87 words, and so too, Baruch Shemar is 87 words. The Chazabor Zarov, Od Kiblu Anshe HaKabala Sheshevach Zetach Lomra Meumad. And they had a Kabbalah to say, recite this standing. Lirmol Shehu Kinegad Atsura Hal Yona. Again, corresponding to, I think, the maybe the Malachim as well. Hadahu Dixiv. Oh, here's the Pasuk. He mentioned, in Yishayahu mentioned the Pasuk. Srafim Omdim Ima Allah. So in this context is where in Yeshayahu Perak Vav, here at Pasuk Bet, I think in Kitsuki later, that's where it says Kadosh, 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 Hashem. So, so that's in that context. So we, we model actually a lot of our standing after this idea. 
Um, first of all, here mentions Serafim Om Dimon, that's why we stand for some of these in turn to be Mikadesh Hashem. And also, we're not going to really talk about this later, but when it comes to standing certainly for Shemona Esrei and Kedusha and Kaddish for the one which we're saying as well, not only do we stand, but we stand with feet together. And that also corresponds to the idea that these Serafim, these Malachim, only had really they stood with one leg, and it's, uh, we stand with two feet together to almost correspond to them as well. So we model, if, I think if we look in excuse me, Shayel Perak Vav will model, you know, standing and also sometimes how we stand based on, based on them. So Lachain, he writes, Bechol Eretz Ashkenaz Pesarfat, Omrim Shevach Shel Baruch Shemar Ba'amida. So based on this idea that it fell from Shammai in this note and Baruch Shemar giving praise to God, so they say Baruch Shemar standing. So Kach Kiblu Mina Chassidim Vanshi Maise Shayu Omrim Oso Ba'amida. Okay. So now we should be bothered. D is that the Rabbeinu so there? So if the Rabbeinu here is referring to the tour, if the tour actually held Dimitam Malash Yishtabach Atzmo Tzarech Lomar Muumad, that we have to stand for Yishtabach because it's such a great praise to God. Even though it doesn't say that explicitly anywhere. So im ken kal v'chomer binosha kal So that's why they try to emphasize their kal It Says absolutely no. Kavachomer, the son of a Kavachomer, meaning for sure the Tarek Lomar Baruch Shemar Ba'amida. Why? Because Baruch Shemar, there's a good reason to stand. We have a good source for that Baruch Shemar based on the Achimnes Gedola, this note falling. So we have a good source for standing for a Baruch Shemar, and we don't really have a good source for standing for Yishtabach. And the Shulchan Aruch doesn't mention anything about standing for Baruch Shemar. So if he doesn't mention anything standing for Baruch Shemar, no way are you going to have to stand for Yishtabach. So Velama Lokasav Kakrabenu Elavadai, so Dirabenu Lokasav Elamashu Khab Minadin. So all when it comes to the what standing the Shokhnarh or here again really the tour, I'm sorry. He only mentions what's Khaib Minadin, Ukfi Hadin, Ain Sarkla Mod, and you know, according to letter of the law, you don't have to stand. Lo Baruch Shamar, the Lobi Ishtabach, not for Baruch Shamar, Yishtabach. El the Shliach Tibur, he's your Shiamalitneateva. For the Shliach Tibur, he should stand again. Why? Uh, sorry, um, just so you can be ready. So here he mentions a very interesting custom. And therefore, on the weekdays, so this is not so yet, the the, the the Kahal also stand with the Shliach Tzibur. Why? Because there's an idea of the Kahal standing as well when you recite Kaddish. And since you're really supposed to recite that standing, so not only should the Shliach Tzibur stand for Yishtabach, but really now everybody else should stand because they too have to prepare for Kaddish. Aval b'Shabbos, he mentions here on Shabbos, no hagim shakahal yoshvim b'Shash Omer Yishtabach. Apparently the custom where he lived was that they sat for Yishtabach. Why? Lefisha chazan minagei numarich b'sof birchaz Yishtabach. Because he would, the chazan would sing a little bit at the end of Yishtabach. You know, there'd be, not everybody's in a rush, so there'd be more singing. So between Yishtabach and Kaddish, there was some sort of singing. You can start to know for us, Minion. I'm sure everyone will appreciate that. Isn't it ironic that we're in this room when he's saying that? you own din So they said, well, why should we stand for nothing, right? Because it's not like we don't have to stand for Yishtabach to prepare for Kaddish, because the Chazin has a nice interlude in the middle where he's going to sing a lot. So we don't have to stand for Yishtabach. And they would wait until Kaddish started to stand up. Isn't our tendency, though, that the chazan sings more when we're standing? I mean, think about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I, mean, I don't know what the correlation is, but yeah. Captive but, audience. Yes, it could be. Maybe. The east of the Tariq Lomar Ishtabak, but Amida Mitzar Atzmo, again, and if you actually think that you had to stand for Ishtabak, Heach Ta'u Kol Yisrael Leishay B'Shabes B'Shashom Ishtabak. No way that everybody make a mistake and sit for it. Ella Kedamra. So here he's really justifying not justifying as much as you know, reinforcing the idea, which might again I should have tried to speak to Spartan who could enlighten me more. But the idea that really for Pesukim as Jimra, there's really no obligation to stand for anything. Again, the Rama mentions a minhag, and therefore we shouldn't really don't deviate from minhagim. And you should stand for Baruch Shemar, Yishtabach, Bavach David, 
Mishmar the Toda came in there somehow, or I don't know how. Um, probably I mentioned actually because it corresponds to, to the Korban. But here the Bach is just mentioning that, and even when the Shulchan Aruch says stand for Yishtabach, it's not because you need to stand for Yishtabach. It's because you have to stand for Kaddish after Yishtabach. So that sums up a little bit for Psuke de Zimra. So moving on, the next part after Psuke de Zimra, we have Kaddish Baruch but is Kriya Shema and the brachos of Kriya Shema. And here we're going to see that in terms of standing, there might be more of an idea specifically not to stand and you should sit for these parts. So let's just see. You also one thing. Uh, in Pesuk Ezra, you say Ashrei. Okay. Is there, there is usually to sit because you're saying Ashrei, Yashrei, Zetacha. Yeah, okay. I mean, no, I don't like, so, 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 like if you're using, like if you're going walking through a shul using a hypochondria. Correct. They tell you to sit down and say. Yeah, but that's so that's probably just I, I don't. Oh, yeah. I would say it's more of a cute idea, as more as, as like Paul, specifically okay. you have to sit for Ashrei. Like no, the, no, I mean, no, I can't say yeah, specifically okay. sit, but okay. Right. So Kriya Shema and the Bracha. So here I'll read you a Mishnah, which when I saw it reminded me. So maybe people here are familiar with it as well. So Beishamai Omrim by Erev Kol Adam Yatevi Krav Vaboker Yamod. So Beishamai says when it comes to reciting Shema at night, you should lie down, sit down when you say Shema, and in the morning you should stand up. Why? So when talks about Shema, it says when you lie down, when you get up. So Besham, I think that corresponds to the way you should be when you recite those Psuke, those um, Kriya Shema. No, what are you talking about? There's no, we don't care. We don't care what position you're in when you recite Kriya Shema in the morning or afternoon. Shinamar uvelech lecha vaderech, because in the same psukim it says, when you're on your way. So we don't care. When you're on your way, we don't care what position you're in. Im ke lama nemar uvashoch v'cha v'kumecha. So why does it use those words? Because it's referring to when you should say it. B'sha'ash b'nei adam shochvim. U'v'sha'ash b'nei adam omdim. Because you, v'shoch v'cha v'kumecha, you should say Shema when people get up, i.e. in the morning, when people go to sleep at night. Amar Rabbi Tarfon. Rabbi Tarfon said, "Ani ha'isi ba baderech." I one time was traveling, vihi tasi likos kedip be shamai, and it was night time, and I had to say shema, so I lay down on the ground and I recited kriya shema. Vesakanti be'atzim v'tein alisim, and I put myself in danger because there were armed robbers around and they uh, either attacked me or they almost attacked me, because I I took a break and and lay, lay down on the ground to recite shema. So Amrulo, they said to him, "Kidai ha'isa lachu ba'atzmecha, you deserved it." Shavarta liver Beishelel. What right did you have to paskin like Beishamai? Paskin like Beishelel. Why did you have to sit down? Beishamai says you can say Shema however you want. It's your fault. You shouldn't have laid down. You put yourself in danger. You almost deserved what you got. Was that the least thing that told them there? Sorry? Is that the least thing? <laughs> I don't know who told them. Maybe, hopefully. So the. I Mel Halbus that could use that as a defense for any of his clientele. <laughs> He's a criminal lawyer. Oh, there you go. <laughs> they deserved it. So in source number six, the Shulchan Aruch, when he, based on this, he actually writes as follows: Misha wrote Hachmir. If somebody wants to be machmir, laamod kishihu yoshev v'likrosa meumad. So if somebody wants to be machmir and stand. You know, he's sitting, and then he decides he wants to stand up in order to recite Kriya Shema. Nikra Varyan. So he is considered a sinner. Uh, why? Because so, and, and I'm trying to see if I put this in the source here. Maybe it, I'm not sure if I made it in. Or often, if somebody wants to be machmir, you're allowed to be machmir. There's no so you know often when you have a machlokes beis shamai beis hilal, so we you know beis shamai is often machmir. So if you want to be machmir for beis shamai, you can be machmir. There's no there's no problem. But here. There's no idea here in this argument between Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai of Chumra and Kula. It's two different understandings of the Psukim. It's not a Chumra according to Beis Shammai that you have to say in that position. That's just an understanding of the Psukim. So in this case, when you don't have a Chumra and a Kula, so when we paskin like Beis Hillel, so it's inappropriate and you're, right, you're called a sinner if you go in public and say, no, I'm going to paskin like Beis Shammai. No, we don't pass like Beis Shammai. We pass like Beis Hillel. And it's not as if Beis Shammai is a Chumrah. No, he's just arguing on Beis Hillel. We have two different interpretations, and we are all supposed to take the Beis Hillel 
uh, approach. So the Aruch HaShulchan writes as follows. It says, Ha'emes Nira. Here as follows. De b'shacharit de l'be shamay davka ba'amida. So again, in the morning, uve kumecha. So b'shamay thinks you specifically have to say shma standing. But there, so in such a case, Asr Lamor. So in such a case, it's forbidden then to get up and stand for Kriya Shema because then you're showing that you pass in like Beit Shammai. Kisha Yoshev. Again, only it seems like Asr Lamor Kisha Yoshev. Meaning, if you were sitting and then Shema, Shema starts and you decide, oh, Shema, I need to stand up. So that is Asr. That's actually forbidden because, again, that's almost following Rabbi Tarfon and he was. Right, he deserved it. He's Nikra Avaryan. Uba Arvi still Beit Shammai Dafka be Yeshiva, and at night when Beit Shammai says you have to specifically be sitting, the Baze Asur Kishe Omed Leishev. In such a case, if you were standing, so then it would be forbidden to sit down. Demechti the Avi Kibei Shammai, because then it seems as if you are. Specifically, paskening like Beis Shammai. Aval lehefech, but to do the opposite. So b'shachris kishe omed muter leishev. So if you're if you're standing in the morning and then you decide you want to sit, so obviously that's permitted. Ubaarvis kishe yoshev muter lamod, and at night if you're sitting, then it's obviously permitted to stand. Did bazer yefshar lachush tabi kibeis Shammai? Because such a case you're not showing any tendency to pass like Beis Shammai. The other rabbi, the Zehu Hefech Beis Shammai, you're doing the exact opposite of Beis Shammai. The, this is all in the Aruch Shulchan. The Mishnah Brura seems to be more machmir, and I think he says that even if you're sitting, I think he says and even if you're Mar-Vi, sitting at Mar, if you're not allowed to stand, stand up, you shouldn't stand, right? Which but if you have to be standing, which standing. doesn't make yeah. any sense to me because the, Ar- the Aruch Shulchan makes a lot more sense because no, he's making more sense. Who makes more sense? The, the Mr. Brura? Yeah. Why? Because if you're already sitting, you're not going to stand for Shema. It's sort of like the reverse, like you're, you're showing, you're sort of insulting Beit Shema by saying, see, I'm sitting, now I'm going to stand. Oh, he doesn't mention that. Okay, I didn't think about that. Okay, so you want to say that's an insult? If you're, yeah, if you're sitting, you're sitting, and everybody's happy, and that's it, end of the story. Maybe. So therefore, he's saying don't change your position altogether. Okay, yeah. I thought the Arkhul going to make more sense, meaning. Again, we're more. Con- I think I mean, you're, you're, it's nice you're concerned for Beis Shammai. We seem to be more concerned for for Beis Hillel. Right, but the logic would be that you wouldn't. What I'm saying is, you, if you're sitting, yeah. you're not going to stand until Shmona asks. Right. So why? So all of a sudden you're going to stand up and say, "Look, look at me. I'm an anti Beis Shammai." That's, okay. That's so okay. okay. So I didn't see anybody mention that far. So that's a yeah. good start. So maybe that that's the logic behind it. Our Shulchan again is just mentioning that no, as long as you're, if you're doing the opposite of what Beis Shammai said, then we don't really care. So the Lachin at Tor v'Shulchan Aruch Demayri b'Shacharis. Therefore, the Tor Shulchan Aruch, since the time of the morning, <coughs> all they write is Kishe Yoshev Asher Lamod because B'Shacharis you have to stand. And we're saying no, you're not allowed to stand. V'Chein Nira Ikar Ladina. And then he continues V'Od Nira the Davker Kishe Osem Ipnei Hadin Kedei Latesi Dei B'Shama Yesh Isser. So he says really also there's really only a prohibition here when you're doing it specifically to paskin like B'Shama. Rabbi Tarfon. Why? Because when Rabbi Tarfon did it, what did he say? Shemar he tasted likros kadiver be shamai. He said specifically he was doing it to paskin like be shamai. So that's problematic. Kaval kisha osa below kavana. If you do it, just you're not really thinking about it. Kimoshi shanashim sheino bimnucha kami v'yoshvim. Right? Sometimes people are uncomfortable when they're saying they want to stand up. V'choshvim v'kami v'choshvim v'yoshvim. They'll get up and they sit and they stand. So ink peda. So then we don't really care. Now the truth is that's kind of hard to discern. You know, how do you know if somebody's standing because they're passing like Beis Shammai? How do you know somebody's standing because? So the Mr. Bura here, I think, argues as well and says, no, we don't base it on kavana. You really don't stand if you are uh, sitting. So that seems to be. So this is the idea of again. It seems to be here. There's an idea almost again more in the morning not to stand for Shema because we don't want to pass in like Beis Shammai. And certainly, if you're sitting to start off, don't stand up in order to recite it. And then beyond that, Valpia has Zohar, beyond that the Zohar says Kriya Shema de Shachare Subir Choseha um Kriya Shema in the morning and the Brachos before Dafka Myushab, you specifically should sit Al Tihilos Lakal Yon right till right before Shmona Esre. The Az Yakum Via Amod, the Khin Mivoar, I don't know what that stands for, the Kavanas, the Nikra Tfila de Myushab. The Zohar says that the whole section really from after Yishtabat to Shmona Esre we call it Tfila de Myushab and generally, that's a part of downing where people make a point um, to sit based on the Zohar. And again, we don't want to pass them like Beis Shammai. So here, you know, we're talking about standing. Here, there's really, when it comes to Shema and the brachos, certainly in the morning, there's an idea specifically not to stand. There's more of an idea to sit for those uh, sections. Okay. Continuing onwards, we'll get back to Shema and Esri in a minute. 
Chazar uh, Sashatz. So, do we stand for what? We, what's the custom for that? So the Raman, verse number eight, right? Yish Omrim Shekol Adam Yamdu Kshachozer Shatz Tefila. There are some people who say that everybody should stand for the entire Chazar Sashatz. Why? The Mishnah explains. Time I'm Kevan Shemechavni B'Shomi Mishliach Tibor because you're supposed to really idea of, of the idea of. Um, Chazar Sashat is that he's really resetting on our behalf, on behalf of everybody. So Vishomek One, Uchi Ilumis Pali Baatma Damia says if we're all really resetting it ourselves. He says that you know, I guess what people used to do was they would stand but now because we're all sinners, everybody does what they want, people are sitting, people are talking, the people don't really treat Khazar Sashat the way they are uh, supposed to, and the Mishnah Brewer therefore concludes, um, says it's appropriate to stand for the whole thing, um, but mentions that the custom is be many don't, and I forget, and I think the custom of what many people do, I don't know where it's recorded, is that many people stand from the beginning of it until after Kedusha, and then they will sit uh, for the rest. I don't know where the source for that um, is, but again, many people um, Trav Chazar Shash to stand. There are those I know, Rav Salvechik, Rav Lichtenstein, and Gush also. Uh, they, not only would they stand for Chazar Shash, they would stand with their feet together, as if they were saying themselves Shmona Esrei, which is hard enough on a normal day, but they would, I'm pretty sure, do it on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur as well. So imagine standing for Musaf Yom Kippur with your feet together, and you're not the Chazin. I mean, I feel like if you're the Chazin, then you could. Um, but anyway, so I think that was their custom. That's what they would do for that. Continue on to Kaddish. So we mentioned before the Ramah mentioned here, Shor Samar Tem, Yish Lama Kishonin Kaddish Pachodavar Shabik Dusha. You know, mentioned the idea of, of standing for that. So here actually what I found uh, interesting is that the different customs that it mentions. Vish Lamor. So the first custom that Mishnah Burma mentions is Ad Achar Shi Yisayim Amen Yehesh Mei Raba. So I'm going to say just stand until you say Yehesh Mei Raba because that's really where, I guess at that point, is where we're glorifying God, you know. And then you can sit. Yesh Omrim, and there are those who say, Sheish Lamor Ad Amen Shala Achar Yisbara. So some people say you should stand until um, the end of what we would call Chati Kaddish. So right, the end of Chati Kaddish, you probably, you know, into that section, that some people say you should stand then. And then the next Mishnah Brewery brings as follows. V'yesh Omrim, another custom, She'ein Sarich Lamor, Ela Shekol Kaddish Shetovso Me'uman. Really, you only have to stand for Kaddish if you're already standing beforehand. Kigon la'achar halel. So, right, we say Kaddish often after halel. So, since we stand for halel, lo yeshev ad she'ya'ane amen yeheshme raba. So, stand until you say yeheshme raba, and then sit. So, but they're only standing, but if they were sitting when Kaddish started, then they would continue to sit. Uh, as well. So we mentioned before, I think some Sephardim sit for Kaddish. I don't know if they sit for every Kaddish. Well, and again, if you're sitting, think about it. If you're sitting, let's say, for all Tzuket Zimra, and then Kaddish is afterwards, so you're sitting for Tzuket Zimra, I guess you <coughs> say, maybe you could sit for Kaddish as well. But I'm assuming that, at least when it came to Baruch Hu, that even they would well, they stand don't say out. Well, so they said, like, at the end of Dali, for instance, they'll say Kaddish before Aleinu. Okay. So, They'll say well, like a like, kalkenu, and then they'll do the pursuit, and then they'll they'll be a kaddish for okay. the uh, for the mourners, okay? And then they'll do a lena. So and they're sitting for that. They're you're saying. They'll, they'll, because they're, they're sitting for yeah, the because they're saying yeah, okay, yeah. okay, there you go. So they probably I would say again I, I don't know for sure, but the, if the Sephardi minhag would probably be based on this idea that if you're sitting already, then there's no idea to stand for kaddish. Only if you are standing, do you have to stand? Uh, but it's better to be machmir, and certainly the Ashkenazi classic is to stand for all, all Kaddishes and really the whole Kaddish. And here, what's this? So, where do they base this on? The idea of standing is based on the story in Sefer Shoftim that the Ehud, one of the judges, goes to where Eglon was suppressing Jewish people. So, what does he do? Eglon was a, was a heavy man, and he mentioned God's name. And as Eglon tried to stand up, uh, Ehud went and he killed him. So we should learn Nochri. He was not Jewish He heard God's name and he stood up. So certainly, you know, 
the Jewish people, when we hear God's name, Kaddish about, you know, glorifying God, we should certainly stand for that as well. I think this is why some people say, who descends from Eglon? Roots. So, David Amelech, right? So, pretty good lineage for a bad king. I think people say his reward was for standing, you know, one of his rewards was, you know, standing here for, for God's name. And here they mention another custom of a Kavanos. I think this is the, the Kavanos is, it must have been the book that Rizal. Isach Arizal Haya Noheg, or just mentions the custom that Rizal. Bechol Kadishim Shalachar Amida the Shachar Michava Arvis Haya Nishar Omed. Now it came to the Kaddish after the Shemona Ashris, he would stand. Uvishal Tiskabo Vechshel Chazar Sefer Torah Haya One, Becharka Haya Yoshev. So he mentions other customs uh, here. But again, certainly our custom is to stand for for Kaddish. So that sums up that part. Just to conclude, Shmon Esrei, right? Obviously when we talk about standing, right, we call Shmon Esrei is the Amida, which means to stand, so that should be the most important part about standing. When it comes to standing for Shmon Esrei, so here in terms of the reasons, when, it, when we talked a little bit about until now, it seems to be the reason for standing was almost to give praise. We mentioned Shabbat, glorifying God. I think when it comes to stand, standing for Shmona Esrei, it's a bit of a different reason. I think the reason is more in terms of, I think we do it more out of fear almost. That's when we're coming to God. So we stand out of fear. And we do it in a way that we should have, uh, I think in order to really allow us to have more Kavana when we are we are we are davening as well. So well, a lot of things we do is is, a, is like we're walking to a king, walking from a king. Correct. So right. That's why we so take three steps mean, back and three steps forward. We stand with our feet together, right? We're we're as if we are in front of the king. A lot of what we do, we bow. So a lot of what we do in Shmona Esrei is is reflective of that. So I think the reason why we stand is a little bit different than the other cases we've mentioned. I'll talk a little bit about here, about more of the, so obviously if you want to ask, I think it's, you know, you have to stand. I'll talk a little bit about the exceptions. Uh, more I mentioned that I think he says Stan Silverberg gave a share about davening on a plane. So I only, I'll briefly touch on that um, at the end because I see we're, we're out of time. But, so how about when you, what, what do you do when it's difficult to stand for Shmona Esri? And here also when talking about standing for Shmona Esri, here it gets into the direction. So obviously you're supposed to stand uh, facing, well, here they mention Mizra, but really obviously facing Yerushalayim, mentioned a funny a custom here. Well, not a funny custom. They mentioned the idea of you should really put the Aron east because you stand that way. So in the, in the old YU base Medrash, so the Aron was not facing east. The Aron faced, let me get my direction straight. I think you're saying west. It faced north. No, it wasn't backwards. It faced north. In, in the old in, in the old YU base medrash, the base the the Aron in the base medrash faced north. So it's you could say it was sad or funny. Whenever you would daven Shmona Esrei right there, uh, we used that mainly in my first year there. Once my second year they had already gone to the new one, so you had the so now you had tension. You daven to the Aron or you daven east. So you had about 90 degrees. So you'd see people davening anywhere from straight to the Aron, straight east, and anywhere you know any any of one of those 90 degrees. Uh, in between people. Was that the building off Amsterdam? No. Yeah. And then you would turn, you would be walking north, you'd walk into the building, yeah. which is going facing then west. Correct. And then you turn south into the base manager. No, you make a right into the base manager. Oh, in the very small one. No, in the big one. We'll talk about it after. Okay. But yeah, it faced yeah. <laughs> north. So, oh, and apparently, I, I was reading Nefesh Arab is a book of Shech to write about the customs of Rav Salvechik. So, I mentioned Rav Salvechik's father, his customs. And they mentioned how the Rav's father didn't like to dub in, um, in the YU base measure specifically for that reason. And I think also that's why there's a little room. There's a little room next to the base medrash where sometimes they dove in, and there it faces east. And I think sometimes, I remember hearing somebody, maybe it was Rav Rav, uh, Rav I think maybe used to specifically uh, dove in there. They mentioned the Rav didn't like to dove in the base medrash, but I just thought it was funny because I was looking through the Aruch Hashulchan here, and he says if you're diving in a place where the Aron isn't facing, I think east, and everyone's diving to the Aron, so you shouldn't do it. You know, you shouldn't really deviate from the custom of the place. Maybe because everybody at YU had a different custom, so <laughs> there's no real custom in the place, so you can do what you want. But so that's just in terms of how to stand. But here, obviously, I guess the only times it's problematic or you think of when you wouldn't stand for Shmona Esrei. Again, obviously in all these cases if somebody has difficulty standing and it's painful and it's, you know, so then you don't, you don't stand. But it is, you know, really if you're traveling. So probably on an airplane, maybe let's say on a bus as well or a train. 
So the Shulchan Aruch writes, "Hayah Yoshei b'Sfina o ba'agala." Let's say you're on a ship or you're on a wagon. Im yachol la'amod b'makom akrios. So it's fine. It's too hard to stand. At least try to stand when you're when for the what he calls here when you're bowing. So maybe in the beginning, maginavo for modim. So too hard to so sit for everything else. When you come to those parts, at least try to stand up so you can bow while you're in a standing uh, position. And the Ramad starts even though you're sitting for the whole tefila. If you're able to stand at least for those parts, it's appropriate to do so. And that's and the next part that was funny. Let's say it's impossible for you to stand. Let's say you're riding on animals. That was really the previous step. I didn't bring that in. So then, you know, whip your animal and let the animal take three steps back for you. And it's as if you took <laughs> your three steps. No, that's the pilot, it's, as if, it's as if you took your three steps back. And then in source number, in source number 10, it's actually a very uh, fascinating source. Let's say somebody has to sit, daven sitting. If you're on a plane, you need a daven, and you need a daven sitting. If you're able to, so you should daven again while you are standing. We mentioned that yes, sometimes if you have to daven again, you should add something new, so it should be a new tefillah. Here we're saying no, you don't have to add anything new. Your davening is almost qualitatively different if you're standing. You should, if you're able to, you have to daven again while you are standing. That is not the custom. Or Akshok mentioned that. Kasha Rabbeinu Beis Yosef Besif Tes Misha Uchrach Lispal Miushav Kishiuch Al Tzarech Lach to Lispal Meumad Veitar Klosi Badavar Ume Olam Lo Shamanu Kain. We've never heard anybody do that. Kishem Ispalim Bederech Miushav Yachsu Lispal Meumad. Nobody have ever seen somebody daven on the way. They never daven again. You know, if let's say they they weren't sure they would get there in time, say so daven sitting, but daven not. then they get to a place they had, there's time still to daven mincha. Nobody in the world would ever daven again. You should certainly not do it if you want to daven again. You'd have to do it in terms of a nedava. It's if you, you know you, you know it's voluntary. And vehaidna in kedai lispal nedava and. Folks can say that nowadays we don't, th- th- no, we don't, we don't recommend anybody ever having to with dava. I think we're concerned you're not going to have the proper kavana. Nobody, nobody ever mentions that. Yes, so you certainly you would not um, repeat your shmona esrei. And here in source number 14. So then I was just looking a little bit into davening um, onto airplanes uh, and to what you should do uh, then. So the Igros Moshe writes, "Vami spalo miyushav ba'aviron." Uh, if you're done sitting when you're on a plane, ain't no tarich lachzor li spalel. So don't repeat your shmona esrei. Ve'ap lechatchila im kasha lo ha'amida ba'aviron yet harud bishvilzeh. And if it's too difficult for you to stand, so it's better to sit. And he says, and he mentions before that if you can, you should stand up for when you, uh, for when you get to the parts when you have to bow. And the Rosh Hashanah Zalman in a book, he didn't write it, but Halich Hashanah mentions the rulings of the Rosh Hashanah Zalman Auerbach. He too says you, should really, you, don't, you shouldn't stand when you're davening on a plane because you're going to be in the aisles and you're going to bother everybody in the aisles. And then it's funny, I don't really know how the safer works. I have to look into it. There's, they have, you know, in this book, Halich Hashanah for Rosh Hashanah Auerbach, they have the, the rulings and they have like all these different commentaries. So one of the commentaries, they're, therefore, better to be sitting. And then the next commentary says, and you don't have to be concerned about you don't have to be concerned about a mechitza on a plane because it's not it's a, it's not a shul you really don't have a sh- mechitza in a shul it's not a shul you don't have to be worried about a mechitza the next commentator says but really Rosh Hashanah didn't think you should have minyanim on the plane so that's really irrelevant because you shouldn't be making minyanim on the plane so you don't care about a mechitza uh, anyway so that's the other issue that right, it comes to davening on a plane in terms of sitting right in terms of making a minyan. Most most rabbis say not to make a minion. I don't know. I've yet to see anybody who says you should make a minion, and many rabbis who, you know say that yeah, people make a minion probably. I mean, the idea really of not making a minion is because it's inappropriate and it's bothering, bothering to everybody. If you charter a flight and you're on a flight with a hundred from people and everybody there wants to be in a minion, so then there's no problem making a there's no problem making a minion on a plane and. Uh, there wouldn't be a problem standing in the aisles if you're not bothering anybody. But again, they, they mention 
Rosh Hashanah says, don't stand, better to sit, because if you're standing in the aisles, you're going to be bothering everybody. So really everything depends on circumstances. So generally the circumstances are, you're going to be bothering people, you shouldn't, I haven't seen a minion on a plane in a long time. I don't know if anybody, you see, you see it, you still seen it? I haven't seen it. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen it yeah, in a long time. It's very accommodating in many yeah. other ways. But um, but many many uh, the posting I've seen do not recommend making a minion. And uh, you can listen to that. You know, more I can tell you or listen to share that time gave. I'm sure it would be more in detail. But I just wanted to bring it in terms of standing. And then something else interesting is I saw Rosh Hashanah also. Is let's say how about in a car? So he says, if you're a passenger in the car, so then you can daven. But he said, if you're driving a car, he said, you actually, yeah. let's say you don't have time to daven. He says, I mean, it's not surprising. He says, obviously, you shouldn't daven. You shouldn't bench either. And he says, obviously, because if you're driving, you have to pay attention to the road, and you shouldn't be paying attention to anything else if you're in a car. So then uh, you could drive, but certainly don't, uh, if you're driving the car, then, sorry, don't daven if you're driving the car.